So as I said, as I spoke in my last talk about these forklifts, this is the same drawing, but we just changed the settings and we get different models. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, so I also used them on these as well, on these wood, these heads here. They give us different lengths, one for the small box, one for the large box. So today we're going to draw this and this, this will change as we go along what we want. So we're into fusion now. So this is the model of it. So uh, I, I, we can change the angle of this ma main mask here by going down, changing the degree. And if I put minus five, you should see that move like that. Okay. And it will if I'll just turn it a little bit. Then we've got the height, which is the inner mask. This one here, the green one, and that will go up how, however high we want it to go. Obviously, there's a there, there is a limit on the main mask side. And then we have the uh, fork base, which is the red part. Okay. So we can change, move that up as well, like that. And then we have the forks uh, width. We can change them as well. Okay. So that's what we will have by the end of the, uh, this, uh, the talk. If I put these all back to what they were. Okay. So to make everything easy, I've made different bodies for each part, but there's no reason why this can't all be done in one body and it will still work the same. As you can see, everything is uh, tied up because we've all got reds down here. And we have no yellow or red um, warnings down the bottom. So the first part we're going to do is we're going to draw the base. Okay. So everyone fine with that? Yeah. So first thing I'll do is start a new design and we'll save it. Oops. Yeah. Save. Okay, so that will start the auto saving off. So if anything goes wrong. Okay, one of the questions I was asked about was inserting canvases. So I'm going to insert some canvases on this demo. So this will give everybody a, a, a more idea of how to do it if you don't know how to do it. So we go up to the top here and it says insert. And we come down to canvases. And then these are sitting on my computer. So I go in here and we've got the the uh, canvases here all ready to come in. So I'll pick the side one first because that's a good one to work with. So he's come in and what they're asking for is where do you want to put it on the face? So we've got the three here we can work with. So we just select this one. And if you use your scroll wheel, you can sometimes open it up just to see what it's like because it comes in quite small. And what? And the bit I want is where everybody is. So let us better. Right. So we've got our uh, canvas now inserted, and there is coming. It's made a new folder up and popped it in there, and it's on this face here. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is calibrate it. So when I was work, when if I was doing it in Engage, I would put the proper measurements in and then divide it by one four eight, and that gives me the correct uh, size for Engage. So to calibrate, we go over to the file, we select it, right click, calibrate, and then we select parts that we know measurements. Now I know this measurement here is one twenty millimeters pop that in and enter then you'll see it just go large so to put yourself back on track just click the little home button at the top there right so that's calibrated now we're going to draw a sketch on this to start building the base up so we go new sketch create a sketch 
and we select a face. Oops, sorry, uh, this is the face that I want to draw it on because I want to draw this square here. So select that and it straightens itself up. And basically all we're going to do is just draw a circle, a, a rectangle around the picture like that. And then what I will do now is measure the uh, dimension of these. I know that's 120. And I know this one is 140. Uh, sorry, 40. So if you're working off a plan off the um, um, off the, the net, you wouldn't you wouldn't even have you just put in you draw that square and you just wouldn't bother putting 120 and you just accept what was there because that'd be the right measurements that you would need. OK, so as we can see on this sketch, it's not confined. So what we'll do is we're going to do that now. So I'll turn this off just to make it nice and clear. And we'll select this one. I'll pick this corner here and pop it to this point there. Now Fusion knows exactly where that square is. So it can do all sorts of things with it now. We can exclude this, and I know this is 50. Okay, when it's, it's gone down as a new body. Okay, so it's a good idea to rename. And then on our body, we'll do the same as well. This just makes it easier later on. And then what we'll what do is we'll just change the colour. And I'll, I'll use aluminium because it, it, it has some nice colours to use. Metal, aluminium. And then just a little bit. And we'll just get hold of this blue one, pop it on there. Now we want to change that to yellow. So if I right click the blue and go edit, the colour palette comes up and I'll be able to select yellow like that and go done. OK, everyone all right with that? Anything you want me to go back on? Or... So we've got our base. OK. A um, couple of points. Uh, presumably you're no longer lined up with your canvas. Uh, yes, I'm still lined up. Uh, no, I'm not. But I'm gonna I'm gonna reline it in now. Actually, that's the right. next thing I'm going to do. Yeah. And what format does the canvas have to be in when you insert it? Um, I'm not sure. I think that what they seem to like some some files I've off the net they don't like. So what I do is I screenshot them, and then they like them files. Then whatever you've screenshot them in. But JPEGs and things like that. But some of the web ones I've had problems on. So again, to get past that, all I do is screenshot it, and it will right. come. Up. So, like we just, like gentlemen's just said, we can't. We our um, our drawings not in line now with the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this, and we have this box come up here, and then I just drag this. Get hold of the square and drag it and line it up like that. OK. And then just go OK. So that's now all lined up already. Is that OK? Yeah. Right. That's brilliant. So I'll turn that off because we're going to bring out, we're going to bring some more in now. Now we've got the box to work off. We can bring some more in. So we go canvas again, insert canvas off the computer and we'll select the top one and open. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put it on the top of this. So I select that, it goes OK. But as we can see, the forks are, are facing the wrong way. So if we go down the bottom here, you'll see where you can flip it around. So you just select that and that now has flipped the forks around the right way. The canvas isn't at the right size because we've not calibrated yet, but we'll, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so we've got it on there. We'll hide the body. That doesn't get it confusing. And then we'll go top view. 
right click the canvas, calibrate. And what I'm going to do is use the same one that I did on the side and they shouldn't be too far out of each other. And just tap 120. Again, it's gone large, so just press the home. And there it is. Turn the body back on. And as you can see, we're out of line again. So we just go to the top view, right click, calibrate. Oh, sorry, we've done that, haven't we? Beg your pardon. No, I messed up there. Right, so we're right, we're going to move this canvas into place now. So we edit the canvas, and again, we just use the little square and drag it over and line it up and go, OK. So now you've got your top and your side canvases all in place. OK. So we've got one more to bring in. Let me select this view here. Go insert canvas on my computer. I'm going to select this one here because I want to show you something that happens. So I want to try and stop, um, make make you aware of it, and then you'll be able to. Um, I'll show you a way around it, how to stop it doing it. So we select that face there because we want to pop it on. Okay, and now it's come on here. So we go okay, which we could now is rotate this upwards so we use that rotate and then we we'll, we can use type the numbers in as well because we can see it's slightly out so if we go 106 and we we'll just keep trying it until it's right and there we are 107 so it's the right way up now i'm going to rename this because this is something that i found happens and it gets it gets confusing later on if you've got not named the ones that you want you know name them you name them and then it what it will do you're going to see it in a minute when we edit later it's going to change back to the original name so we're going to calibrate it so we're going to go from there to there and type in 50 so press home again so we know where we are. Now, when we're going to move this in its right place, but if you keep an eye on this name, you're going to see it change back to the original name and it's done it straight away. And that gets quite when it, confusing later on or even then. You keep renaming it all the time. So we go, OK, we've lined that up. OK, so to stop doing that, doing it all the time, what I do is always rename my pitch, my um, canvases before I import them. So if we delete that one out, go insert canvas on my computer and then I'll select the end. You can see it's named end. And go onto that face there. And go OK. And then if you edit this now, you will not, that won't change the name because it's it's using the original name. Right, so that might help some people. So we go edit, zoom in. We know that's 107. Oop. Right, I do that. So okay, so I need to select that and then I'll type 107. And that lines that up. Okay. And again, right click it, calibrate, and then just select the corners. Up 50. Okay. Right. Now we're going to move it back into position. And get all the and go okay all right so now we've got all three canvases all on the model and all lined up and calibrated 
Is that okay for everybody? Any questions? No? Good. Right. I do turn the canvases off because they do get um, confusing and in the way kind of thing. So the next part we're going to draw is it's got a little cutout on the front here. So we use the side canvas. We're going to create a sketch and we're going to draw it. I'll turn that off. We're going to draw it on this part, this face here. Then we put our canvas back on and we use the line tool and just go click like that. Okay, now we'll dimension these. Okay, that's so that's all defined now. Now we're going to exclude that. I'll turn that off. And we're going to go to the other side. So I'll, I'll select object and that go to this object here. If the advantage of that is if you were to make any changes, it would always go to that side. If you do a distance, it will only do the distance. All right. So there's your base. I'll just rename this. I'll call this front slope. Okay, are we all happy with that? And then we'll just give it a save. Just... Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so the next part we're going to draw is we're going to draw this inner mask. All right, this grey part. So if we look at the end sketch like this, we can tell that the inner mask is offset from this edge. And to do so to draw a sketch on on for that mask, we need to off offset it on, on from this side. So we go, we construct an offset plane, we click this edge here. We go back to this part here and zoom in. And what you'll see up here, you'll see this yellow line going across as I drag it across. Can you see it faintly at the top there? Just there. And we just pull it across until it's level. So it's eight mil. So when we turn, when we look at it now, we have got a plane that is level with that mask offset eight mil so we can now draw the mask on that what i normally do is just rename these um oh, these planes so we call this um plane mask off all right oh, well, why i name them is because when you do like that little forklift i showed you earlier there's loads of planes that you will have and this just gives, makes it easier to to go back to them if you want to edit them. OK, so we're going to draw on this plane now. OK, so we select, create a sketch and we select that plane. All right. As you can see, in the way is this part here. So if we go slice, can you see where you can go back onto the actual plane and not see the front part of it so if I go like that you can see how it's jumping about from one to the other okay so we're going to draw the mask now the most important part of this is to go rectangle but go three point rectangle because there's two this constraint here it, when it, if it if you do a two point it chucks those on the horizontal and vertical and you can't change the angles if you do three point, you don't get that constraint on it. So we can go like, so I draw it roughly where I want it like that. All right. Now this is going to go backwards and forwards. So I need a pivot point. So I'm going to select this 
point here to this point on this on the model and then if you if I double click this you can see that that square is just rotating on that pivot on that point all right then to put uh, to div uh, dimension it we go from this edge to this edge we put a de degree angle in there so if we put 15 in there that will tie that up to 15 degrees but we want to change that so what we're now going to put in our first one so we go change parameters all right and there's a box here that says plus so click that and we need to type a name now these names mustn't have any spaces in so we just go main mask angle okay it's going to ask you for a unit of measurement so we select that we come down to angle and we've got a degree here so we select that so it's popped in degree and then we'll just put any number but we'll use 10 and go okay right so then what we do is we click on this double click on it to edit it and all we do is just type m and you'll see it come up here and what will happen if it's right if it's correct everything's fine it will go red then go black and that's when you know that things are right so we just clicked it and as you saw it go went black so that's okay press enter and you can now see that that angle can now be changed just by going into this parameters we change that to five and you can see how it changes is that all right for everyone and go okay right we need to size this mask up because it's not right so we just turn on the side um, canvas but as you can see we can't see it we can't see it because we slice so if we turn off the slice the picture comes back okay and now we can start dimensioning this right to the mask And then we pull, pull that one in. Mention this top one. Okay. As you see that our sketch now has gone to fully defined. So we can now make changes. And if we go into our parameters, we change this again. We'll put four. You can see how it's tilted back. So we know it's all working and go okay turn that picture off now we're going to exclude this we're going to go round to the end we're going to turn on the end picture canvas scroll in and all we're going to do is pull that to we're going you can see it till we're lined up like that and we go so we've got minus three if we go new body we go okay all right and then if we have a look at the model turn the canvas off we go into our parameters again and we change that to say 21 you can see how it's all moved and if we get down the bottom here there's no um there's no uh, yellow triangles or red for errors and things like that. So we'll rename this. This time we can have spaces on the names. And we'll go back into this one, rename this. And change the color as well. So right click it, appearance. Oh, sorry. We'll select that blue again, pop it on there, we'll right click it, we'll give it another colour. Okay, so we've got the two bodies now up here, This the mask and the base, and we've got our sketches down here. All right, 
Now we need two of those. So we go create mirror. You could draw it again, but it's, this is a lot easier it's to create a mirror. So the mirror means it's basically going to draw all that. It's going to put one of those the other side. So we select the body, which is the main mask, like that. And now we're going to select the plane. And the planes we have are these three here and this one here. But as I'll show you, if we select that one, it goes underneath. We select that one, it goes that side. <laughs> if we select that one, it goes next to it. And then the last one, if we select that, it goes right next door. So we need to select another, construct another plane. So we go up to here and we're going to construct a mid plane. And that basic means it's going to put a plane right in the middle of two objects, two faces. So we select this face and the, this face, this side. And now we have a plane that runs right down the middle of that base and if you wanted to put a plane that side you'd select that end and that end these are very very handy uh, on that uh, forklift i drew no end of mid planes and things like that so we just rename this uh, okay so now we can go back to the mirror select it again we can select the body which is the main mask we're going to select the plane that we just constructed and now we have another another mask put the other side and if we look at the ends they're in line with each other if we go to our parameters and change those hopefully They'll all change together, which they do. So, right. they've gone back. So they're all working. At the moment, you'll see another body has been produced and it's got a one. But don't worry about them at the moment. We're not going to rename that because there's something going to happen later. So, okay. So the next bits we want to draw are these two braces that go down the the back of it to hold it together, hold them together. So go back to the drawing. What I'm going to do is go swing the model around. I'm going to draw on the back of these, on the back of one of these masks. So we create a sketch, hit the back there. And I'm going to project the other side. When you, when you project things, you can draw to it and everything like that. So I'm going to draw a line. And this is going to be a construction line. And if we come over this side, there's two types. There's a construction. So I select it. I'm going to latch onto this side and latch onto that side. And then it, and as you see, this line here, there's... They're glued to those things, but they can move outside the model as well. But they'll always keep in line of those two points. And the so next thing I'm going to draw is a rectangle. So we can go up here, rectangle. I'm going to go go for two point. I'm going to draw. The rectangle out but as you can see it's got the dotted lines because it's in construction so if that happens to you just double click it and then just hit the construction button again and it goes back to a normal line now i would i want this box in lined up with this one in the middle of it so this box is always in the middle of this line so i go midpoint I select that line and that box. And as you see, they've just jumped into place. And basically that box is always in, in the middle of that line. And the line's in the middle of the base, so it works both ways. Okay. Now we need to 
resize this. So if we turn the end on the model, it will see the, the back of the brace. So what we can do now is start lining up the parts. So that's not far out. If we do dimension this end here, we'll just pop three. <clears throat> we want the height from the top here to the top of that. We'll type three in. And now the next part we want to do is we want to bring this in so it's in line with that. And we're going to dimension that to that and go three. And then that draw that sketch now is fully constrained. We're going to extrude that. So we select all the parts. We'll turn that one off. We'll go around to the side like that. And we'll turn the side on. And if we scroll in, we can just pull that out to the to the drawing and it'll join and then what you'll notice here is that these will all join up together like that okay and then press home take the um the canvas turn the canvas on and you'll see that you've got your top brace and if we go into parameters again and change those you see that everything's moved. Okay. So the next bit we want to draw is this bit that comes around the corner here. So we have a look is to brace it into. So we go back to original drawing and we don't need to draw a sketch because what we can do is just select that little square there and press the exclude and we can pull that round so we, can, we turn our side on and go like that we turn it off you can see that that's come round the corner okay now that wants a nice little fillet on the end so we select the two bits we want the fillet on Okay, we can again go back to our drawing, turn the side on, zoom in, and we can pull it in. So that black line lines up. Like so. Okay. We'll turn that off. And there we are. We've got it going around the corner. We've got a fillet on the end. Right, we need that on the other side. So we're going to use our mirror again. So we go mirror. It's select to bodies. Now that's no good selecting the body. So what we need is features. So we go to features. So, and we look down the bottom here and we want the two parts, the part we pulled around and the fillets. So it's that one there and that one there. All right. So I'm just having to pull them <laughs> bits. And then what we're going to do, it will want the plane where to mirror it off. So we select the mid plane. And as we can see, there's a ghost version of it gone around the back here. And we just go, OK. All right. And this is how I did most, but all those, those forklift models is just doing it off the plan bit by bit. So when we turn the side on, we've got a second one down here. You could draw it again, but we can use the rectangular pattern. It's selector bodies. We change it to features. And we go down the bottom here. And this time we want all those, all everything. We want this part and all these bits around the corner. So we go down the bottom here select yeah and don't forget your mirror of course you won't get the one around the corner and it's like asking for the axis where you know where do we want the second one or third fourth fifth whatever to go so we want to come down this 
down this pillar. So we select the edge there, and then what we do is we pull it down. We go to the side view, we turn on the side, we can see actually you're in the right place, but you can see where it is and just pull it to it. It's, there's three there at the moment, so if we change that box to two, that will take the middle one out and we go OK. And there we are. So we've got the masks done. I'll just rename this. Like that. We turn it off and we've changed our parameters just to check that everything's moving without the errors and it's moved. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay, the next part we're going to draw is this screen part, the inner mask. So I'll turn them off. So that's the bit we're going to draw. If we notice that the it's running inside the main mask. Okay, so we go back to the drawing. So we need to draw on the inside of this main mask. We can either select this one plane, this part, or we can select that part. It doesn't matter which one you select. But for ease, we'll go for this one. So we'll select the inside of that um, mask. Okay, again, we 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 can we're seeing this part here so if we don't want to see that part we just slice it again and we can see that part okay so we're going to draw a rectangle again a three point rectangle and i'll just draw it off at an angle and that just stops these uh this horizontal vertical latching in Right, so the first thing that we notice is this has got to be parallel with that. So you select the par parallel, select that side and this this side here. And you will see that that's jumped in. And whenever we change that angle, that square moves with it. And it doesn't matter where that square is, that can be right down there that will still move with it and that's what we're after yeah so we pop the side on but we can't see it because we are sliced again so if we turn the slice off the picture comes back and we want to bring that in and start lining it up what we can do go like that and the first dimension i'm going to put in is the gap there's a gap between this edge and that edge so we're going to put that in now and there's also a gap from the top of that to the top of this pull that over there Okay, now we can go down the bottom. If we grab hold of that, we can bring that down so that's level. Dimension that. And then the last one is the thickness. We grab hold of that. So that now is all tied in with that mask. So if I scroll it out and go parameters, we change those. And you can see that it's all moved with it. Okay. Okay. 
and we're going to exclude that out so press E and we need to select all these parts because there's, there's two parts it's this part here and this part that goes round and then to line it up go round to the end turn the end on and then just pull it out so it's roughly level and I'm going to select new body again but you could select your join there's no turn the the um let's get the canvas off and there we are if we change the parameters we should see that all move together which it does that's a good sign okay so i'll rename all this so this will be the inner mask And the same for this one up here. And then we'll change the colour. Right click it, edit. Have a nice green. Okay. So again, we're going to mirror this over to this side here so we select the mirror you've, you've got features selected you can do it features or you can do it bod body at this time so we can just go down here select features which is that we're going to select our plane which is the middle one and we can see the ghost one come up so we know that we're not we're not far out go okay all right again we've got two inner masks we're not going to worry about that at the moment and we'll just check that everything's moving which it is looks good okay so the next part what we'll do is we'll just draw this um brace at the top select that go around the back again i'm going to draw on the back of this green mask so great sketch and on the back of the mask and we'll project, project the other side okay i'm going to draw another construction line so we can uh, center everything up and I'm going from one side to the other. The difference on this one is this will not move because it's tied this way and it's tied that way. So it won't move up and down like the last one. So we draw a normal rectangle. I'll draw it like this. So double click it, then hit the construction. That will send it back to the normal one. And this one's gone to the normal one. We want that construction. So, we'll... and now we're going to midpoint these two point these two up. So we select one edge, and then the other. As you see, they jumped in together. And if we move this end, you can see it's bang in the middle. We turn the end one on we're about to resize this so come down drag it and we'll dimension this end and then we're going to pull that in and dimension this edge to that edge okay now we're going to build exclude this out so we select it and if we come around to the side and turn the side picture on the canvas on we can see that we need to go two ways so we go over to this side two sides if we zoom in and what we do is select this 
arrow here and just pull it out to where we want it to go. And we go select the other side and pull out. And we go OK. And we've done the join and that's joined the two masks to together as well as the top part. And then there's a fillet to put on the top. So we go fillet. And I try to do the awkward ones first, select them first, so you can see what's going on. And then we pull it in and go, OK. So there's our mask. And if we go to our parameters, we just put four, and it moved. Now, we want this mask to go up and down. So what we do is we go back on our timeline to the first sketch that we did with this inner mask. So we go back. And you can see that's, that's the first one. It's going to be this one here. And we go edit. And we go into it. Now, the, the, these, this measurement here and that one there is for the, the size of the uh, mask. This one is the distance from this edge to that edge. So the one we want to change is this one here. So I'll pull them out. We take that one out, delete it. We can move that up and down wherever we want it. Right, so what we're going to do is go into here and we're going to add inner mask type. We want it in millimetres, so we'll just put 10 to start with and go OK. Now I want to keep that 2 mil because I want to keep that just slightly a little bit higher. So if I double click it to edit it, but then I click the other side of the, the millimetres, put a, a, a plus sign in, and then type I, in a mask comes up. I'll select it, it'll go red, then hopefully we'll see it go black. And then press enter. Now we've noticed <coughs> this is changed to 12. So we had originally we had 2 plus the 10 that we've got here. So we know that that's working now. So we could put that up to 67. And we'll see that says 69 because it's always adding the two that we had originally in. OK, so we've now got the height done. So we can now pull this over. Uh, some, oh, no. That's why it wouldn't pull over. And now there's our model. So now if we go into here, we can change that to 2, that to 85. That will shoot up. So we know that that's all working. And go OK. And I'll save that. Any questions? Yeah, John, just a quick one. Yep. Obviously, you've set the parameters there so you make it go up. Can you set a limit how far it can go up as well? Not that I know of. Okay, that's I, fine. <laughs> I don't know of anywhere. They, they may be. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, no, I, I don't know of any way to do it. No, that's fine, John. Thank you. Carry on, mate. With this, we could go, I don't know, say 150, and that will just shoot straight out. That will be still in line. And even if we turn it out, we um, move the degrees, even if we went 21, it all moves together. But I don't know how you would stop it going to. John, do yeah. I yeah. need to change the height of the mask? user parameters because these on automatic if you click user they may be oh what here 
may be a top and bottom. Oh, right. I, what I'll do is I'll have a look on the net and see if anyone... Because I, I think this is automatic. It means it changes it. As you change this, it changes the height and everything. Um, there may be a way to do it, but I suppose a lot of people would use joints or whatever to um, stop it going too far. But I don't honestly know. So, any more? Is everybody all right? Because it's ever so quiet. <laughs> to be fair, John, it's fascinating to see it. So I think everybody's a bit polite, mate. It's just intriguing to see what you're doing and how you're doing it. So, appreciate it. So, the next part I'm going to draw is this base here. All right. Um, so if I turn them off. So it's just going to be this. There's two, the two little standoffs and a plate for the forks to sit on top, sit attached to. All right. You have to excuse me because I've got all these bars in the way of what I want to see. That's it. Right. <laughs> so we're going to draw that, that, that fork base. I called it a fork base. Um, so we're going to go on the front here. And where I'm going to draw it, I'm going to draw it on this green mask upright, this inner one, the green. You can draw it on this side or that side. It doesn't make any difference at all because we're going to mirror it across. So we scroll in. We're going to create a rectangle. Now I'm going to do a, a mistake here because I can sh show you what sometimes happens. So we define that. I'll put that as 20. And that is 2.5. <clears throat> now I want this to be in the middle of this upright. I'll put my construction line in again. I'm going to go down here. And then... Select my midpoint, select that, that's the bottom of the line and the line on the mask. And that's jumped straight into the middle. Now, when I go to here, select this end and go to this one here, I'll get the, the error message up. And the reason I'm getting the error message up is if I look at this box here, a part of it's already constrained. And the reason it's constrained is up here, it's attached to the mask. So if I click, just go to hover over that point, these little constraints come up. And if I take that one out, you'll see that now the uh, rectangle's gone blue because it's not tied to this edge. So now I can go midpoint and latch into there and now that's straight that's now in the middle of that mask and i'll just define this I, it, the reason i've done a lot of these um measurements is because i've been practicing for the last few weeks so or few days so um i've forgotten to name these so i'll just go back and name this this is the inner mask brace top right and then this one is okay so we've drawn that on there now we're going to extrude it out we select it and if we want to see how far we go, we go around to the side, turn on the side view, and then we can just pull it out to the measurement we want, like that. And we're going to go new body and go OK. All right. So if we go around to the front again, turn the side off, we can see it sitting there now. So we'll 
rename this body. And we'll color it as well. Grab hold of it, drop it on, right click, edit, then select your color. So we now need another one the other side. So again, we just go to our mirror, select our mirror. It's set to features, so we select that. Have I put that it's in the way? Um, select our plane, which is our middle line, and now we should see our ghost, which is there, and go okay. All right, that's the first part. Next part we're going to do is this this plate here. So go back to it. We're going to create a sketch and we can draw on it doesn't matter which one you draw on but we'll draw on this one here and the first thing i'm going to draw is that construction line because i want to center up the plate so i just go and when i zoom in because i don't want to latch to this i want to latch to this part here and the reason behind that is later on this is going to move up and down so it's it's better to latch onto something it's going to move with so it's latched into there we'll put another little line in construction line again just to line the plate up when it comes and then that's dropped into the center i know this is three mil so i can do, i'll dimension this now that's okay so i'm going to go draw another rectangle if you want to get rectangles on on the keyboard it's just an r and it will pop up so we'll just draw this like that it's a construction one so if we double click it we can change it to a proper one and then we're going to go midpoint this to that and now that is in the middle Oops. yeah so whatever width it is that will always be in the middle so if we turn on our end view we can line that all up as well actually it's not far out like that and then we just drag that in to the width we want and then dimension that. Okay, screw this out, select all the parts. And then if we go around to the side view, turn the side on, and then we can just pull it out to the size that we want it Go, okay and then there's our plate there rename this okay now we on this model here we need this to go up without on its own without just relying on this inner mask this is this one here for the fork height so if i put 54 in that plate's going to go up so we need to go back into the drawing back into his and we go so so 
so I'm moving all the little windows about. So I go back to, I want to go to the first little uh, rectangle we drew. So if I just pull along on the timeline, you'll see bits disappear. That's our mirror going to disappear. And I want to go into here and edit this. This These two measurements here is for that rectangle, but this is the height one. So this is the one we're going to change. And we just go into here, we set another parameter up. We call this fork height. And we'll put 10 in there to start with. Again, I want to keep this 7 mil height on it. So I double click it, go to the other side of the millimeters, a plus sign. And then if I type F, I see fork height come up. So it will go, hopefully it'll go red then black and if it goes black we're all right and then we press enter so now our measurement is 17 which is the 10 plus the 7 so if i go to here and change the parameters we got 7 and if we go back here type 54 and it's up well done. and then what we do is if we move this over Hopefully we should see everything. Oh. Oh. Does that not want to move? Oh. You got to finish your sketch. Oh, was, oh sorry. Yes. Yeah. Game. That's it. And then hopefully when I move this timeline about everything, you can see that that's moved up to its proper, to its new position. So I go to the parameters and I'll ch change that to, sorry, you can't see. Change that to five, the angle to five. You can see it tilted back. We go 67 goes up and if we go to 10 that will come back down all right and that, and everything at the moment is is good because we've got no yellows or reds come up alerts come up here and everything's constrained so it's looking good so the next part we're going to do is the left and right fork okay so we go to there what i'm going to draw on this plate so i create a sketch select the plate if i turn the um, end on the, the canvas comes up and if i draw a rectangle roughly in its place and then we start moving things around zoom in a little bit And this is the last one. And we just need right to extrude this part out. And if we go down to the side again, return the, sol the um, canvas on for the side, then this will tell us how far to come out. So just come, start pulling it out. Somewhere about there. Okay. 
we turn our canvas off we then got part of the fork upright I'll rename this fork upright and then there's a new body I'm going to rename this as the right fork fork like that and then we'll change the color and actually we'll just use that blue that'll be fine okay so next part we want to draw is the hook is this hook that goes over the top to hook them on so we go back to the drawing and now I'm going to draw it, so I'm going to draw it on the back here, the back of that, right there. So, create a sketch. And then what I'm going to do is slice again. And then I'll just draw a rectangle. So it snaps to that edge. And then, dimension that. escape now turn the slicing off because if you don't you won't see um how far you're actually extruding it it's the only drawback of it <clears throat> what i'm also going to turn off is this plate so we don't do it doesn't try to join with the plate or do anything to that plate I'm just going to turn it off i'm going to select it and then we'll go back round to the side We'll turn on the canvas, zoom in, and then pull to the right measurement. Okay. As we can see, there's a couple of fillets on it. If I go like that, we'll turn the pick and we'll zoom in. I need to select three edges on it. That's that one. That one. That one there. and there's our the top part now we turn the fork plate on they both cut into each other and it looks like a hook a hook but in fact it's just two squares but they've linked in so now i'm going to draw the blade bottom at the bottom so i'm going to draw it on this part here draw the line out and if you have a look in this corner here, you'll see a little blue rectangle. And that means that's coming out at 90 degrees. And I'll do another one here. The same again. 60. Again, we could have used the um, the uh, picture to, to go where we want to go. We're going to use it now to line this one up. Be fine. Dimension that. Then we need a we go for blow. A line come down here. Two millimeters. That's it. And then we're going to join these two up together with a line. I'm just going to, I'll show you something that can happen. It happens a lot more with splines. But if I zoom right in, like that, escape. The reason I've shown you is that is because that's not joined. So we have a look at the drawing, it's not blue. But when we look at it from here, we think it, it should be, and we need to find out where it's not joined. So one way that I do it is just to run lines down and see what goes blue 
So if I do a line before this joint here, I know it's one, it could be one of those two. And you just go like that and you see how it changed blue. So we can then do another line here. So we know that that joint's all right. And then if we do another line here. We can then tell that it's this one here that's causing the problem. It's just uh, something that I found out, you know, say splines, it happens a lot on them. And then all we do is just join those two up together. Like that, and then you saw it go blue. So exclude that. I'm going to come to this edge here. Like that. And we're going to join that part. And then we need to put a couple of fillets on, just take the edges off. So we go here and here, and these are one mil. Now I want to add some more, so rather than keep going OK and go back to the fillet, I can just press a, a plus. It's going to add another one in there, and that's two. And then I want another one on the foot. And go OK. And then all your fillets are all done. Ages. So we need another fork. So we're going to select our mirror. This time, because there's so many bits on it, I'll just select bodies. I can come across, go right fork. I'm going to select my plane, which is the middle one. And there we get our ghost one and go OK. And we've got two. We'll rename this one. Left. Okay. And the last thing is we need these forks to move move a distance apart, set the distance apart with a parameter. So and I've just got to move you all. That's it. So we need to go back to the first part of the fork. So we use our timeline again. So that, there it is there. We could actually just go back with this because we knew that one of them said stay upright and things. So go edit. So the measurements that we need to take out to move this backwards and forwards, this one's the to do with the rectangle and this one because of the height and the depth. And it's this one here, we need to remove that. Now, when we've removed it, you can see it's gone blue. So we're going to draw a construction line. And select the midpoint of that. And then we'll tie this one up with the top. So we now know that that line now is in the middle of that plate. So if, when we set our parameter up, if we go half each for the forks, then that will set our um, width. So we set another parameter. If we go 48, go OK. And then we're going to dimension from this line here to here. Click in there. And we're going to put type F, fork blade distance. But we only want half of it, so we just divide it by two. And it's gone black, so it's quite happy with that. So now when we go to 
change parameters we go 21 we see that the distance is dropped down and now if we go back to our timeline we can see that they're all um, they're all okay and now we just change that back to 48 and we'll see those blades move okay so now our our model is all completed so now whenever we want to print different types of models all we do now is just go into here and change our parameters so we've got one for the degree one for the height of the inner mask one for the fork base and then our forks on their own and okay the only the only thing i do have found is that once you save it when you type in your degree and you type in five it goes the other way but if you just type minus five in it will go back to how you want it towards the cab i don't know why it does it but it just it's just something i noticed yeah once before i thought oh what have i done wrong and but that was the fix so that's your model